our Cape Information Technology Series. <laughs> this is Unit 1, Module 1. The fundamentals Information Technology, and in this side we'll be dealing with characteristics of data. We want to talk about a few definitions that we'll be using in this presentation and the presentations to come. Knowledge, data, and information. What are they? Well, knowledge we can define as specific information about a particular field or phenomenon. Data is factual information or values derived from scientific study. And information is going to be knowledge derived from study of data. Now, when you look at these three definitions, you may be thinking to yourself, but knowledge and information sound like the same thing. But they're not. And we'll get into that in later presentations. But for now, let's keep that in mind. As similar as they sound, knowledge and information are not the same. Let's talk about data and its characteristics. Whenever we have data, we want to ask ourselves, is it unprocessed? Is it discrete or continuous? Is it qualitative or opinion-based? Is it quantitative or based on measurements? And finally, is it detailed or sampled? Unprocessed data refers to data that is an input for any stage of processing or is disparate in nature from the finalized project, which would be information. So what does this mean? Let's say that we have a process, which we represent with this box, call it P. And let's say that the result of this processing is I, some information. The unprocessed data is going to be the input into the process D. So we'll have a process, its input, which will be data, and the finalized product, which is I. But it doesn't end there. Let's say we have another process, and we can call that P2. And this P2 will take this I as its input and give us another output, which we're going to call I2. I would be unprocessed data for the processing sequence P2, which gives us I2. And this brings us to a very important point. Unprocessed data is always a relative concept. D is unprocessed data for I. I is unprocessed data for I2. So let's keep that in mind. Any data that will be processed can be considered unprocessed or raw data for whatever process is going to turn it into its final output. All right, discrete or continuous. Discrete data refers to data in predefined, ch predefined chunks. For example, data that is divided by size or time intervals, and continuous data is infinitely divisible into time intervals. It is uninterrupted. All right, let's say that we have an input, and we've collected some data over time. We'll call this data D. And let's call this T, we've made an axis. And if we collect data every second, this data is in discrete format. Data is collected at one, at two, and at three. It's in predefined intervals. And it can be at predefined values. Let's say that this value that we've stopped at is four. So our data value of four is correct at every second. This is different from continuous data, which we represent here. Continuous data is collected in an uninterrupted fashion. There is no interrupt in between at any stage in the collection. And it can be divided into any amount of time intervals because it is uninterrupted data. So discrete is divided into chunks and continuous is uninterrupted. 
qualitative or quantitative? Qualitative data is subjective. It's based on given criteria or an opinion. And this opinion can, of course, come from an expert or it can be some sort of specifications that the data must meet. Quantitative data is collected based on specific sizes or time intervals. Data can be both qualitative and quantitative. And what that means is that any data that we collect can both be tailored to meet a certain specification and it can also be collected at given intervals or in specific sizes. So these two terms are not mutually exclusive. Any given data can be qualitative or quantitative. When we're looking at data, we want to ask ourselves, is it detailed? Is it sampled? Sample data is taken from specific or predetermined groups. Let's say we want to take data on school children, but we really only want to take data from male school children. This data that we're taking is sampled. It is specific. Of all the children, we're only taking data from the males. Now, if the data is detailed, we'll be taking data from all the children, male or female. Even if we only need data from the males, we'll still have data that represents the full gamut or the full spectrum, the full range of everything that we've collected. Now, it's important to note that these are also relative terms. Because even if you take a sample, you can have detailed data from within that sample. If that sample can represent more data than is necessary, but it's still a sample of yet a larger data set. That's it for data. In our next presentation, we're going to continue and talk about information, its type, its characteristics, and how it relates to data. This has been Noel Francis, a science tutor. Thank you.